You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. And it is this association of Frigidaire and... This association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in Frigidaire and homes have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability, for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. More Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. That's all right. What's up? You remember Dr. Alfred Brenner? Brenner? Yes. Nuclear physicist. Retired about 20 years ago, didn't he? Yep. He's working again. Oh, nice going for a man his age. Yep. And there's a young man with me here named Ellsworth Gilbert. Claims he's Brenner's assistant. Also claims that Brenner's on the verge of making an important atomic discovery. Oh, what else does he claim? That both Brenner and his discovery are in great danger. Ken, I'll be right over. Where are you? In your office. My office? The night watchman called your secretary when he found this Gilbert trying to break in. Must I repeat this over and over again like a parrot? While you're sitting here wasting time with these questions... Heaven knows what they're doing to Dr. Brenner. Mr. Gilbert, when a man's caught trying to break into this office at two in the morning, I think some questions are in order. I had to get in here. I'm going back to join Dr. Brenner in Madagascar tonight. I had to see somebody no. before I... Uh, tell us something about Dr. Brenner's discovery. He's working on a method of using common metals like iron or lead for nuclear fission. It's not quite perfected yet. That's why the doctor sent me to America to get all possible information on atomic energy. And did you? This information I have is all Dr. Brenner needs to complete his experiment successfully. Why do you say Dr. Brenner's in danger? There's a man who owns a nightclub in Madagascar called the Black Rose. His name is Rocky Grant. He's a cheap racketeer, but a dangerous one. Especially when he wants something. Something like the doctor's discovery? Yes. Hand me that telephone, Chief. Sure, Ken. Hagar, this is Ken Thurston. Tell me all you know about a man named Rocky Grant. Rocky Grant? That bloodthirsty gangster who would kill his best friend for a quarter, Mr. Thurston, I've never heard of him. That's all I wanted to know, Pagon. Meet me at the airport in half an hour. Where are we going? Madagascar. I wish somebody would be good enough to tell me what I am doing here in Madagascar. Sorry, Pagon. I have to bring you along. You know enough about Rocky Grant to be useful. Who is there? Hello, Dr. Brenner. Gilbert, I'm so delighted to see you. Oh, doctor, this is Mr. Thurston. How do you do? And Mr. Zellschmidt. Hello. Oh, 
please excuse my bad manners, gentlemen. I'm so happy to see Gilbert, I forget common courtesy. It's a pleasure to meet you, Doctor. Uh, Gilbert, I'm impatient to know. Was your trip successful? Oh, more successful than we dared hope. Oh, come, show me what you brought. We've come all the way from America to talk to you, sir. Talk to me? But why? You're in danger here. We want to take you where you'll be safe. Oh, I'm merely an old man tinkering with science for my own amusement, Mr. Thurston. Who would possibly want to harm me? Possibly, uh... Rocky Grant. Oh, Rocky Grant. Oh, I see that Gilbert has been telling you tales. Is that another way of saying you won't return to America with us? As you see, I'm getting on, my friend. I cannot afford the time to become enmeshed in these plots of intrigue. Believe me, I'm more than grateful for your deep concern about me. But you won't leave? No, I won't leave. Tell me, Mr. Thurston, what are we doing in the Black Rose nightclub? We're waiting for the proprietor. Oh, you know him? No, you do. This is Rocky Grant's place. Rocky Grant? You're using me as a piece of bait. A worm on a fish hook. Well, this worm is not only going to turn, it's going to scram. Well, if it isn't Pagan Delschmidt. Benoit. Aren't you going to introduce me to the lady, Pagan? This is my friend, Mr. Ken Thurston. So you're Ken Thurston. Won't you join us, Miss Vanua? Well, thanks, I will. I've got a few minutes before I go on again. You work here? I am the floor show, if you please. Then perhaps you would tell me where I can find Rocky Grant. No, I couldn't. Rocky left here a few minutes ago and said he wouldn't be back tonight. Pago, um, aren't you a little late for your appointment? My appointment? With the doctor. The doctor? Oh, yes, that's right. I'll, I'll see you all late. Pagon's changed. When I used to know him, he never ran around with respectable persons like you. Well, thank you. But you don't even know me. Don't I? Would you like me to tell you what you were doing on September 23rd of last year? I couldn't even tell you that myself. A man named Ken Thurston had just won the semifinal round in an amateur golf tournament at the West End Country Club. But he lost the finals by default because he was mysteriously called away on urgent business. How did you know that? That story was an AP dispatch. Yeah, but do you remember everything you read? I remember everything. That's my profession. I have a memory which retains everything I see or hear. Vinoy, the girl who never forgets. What's the matter? You're looking at me as though I were a freak or something. Well, I was just thinking a memory like yours could be invaluable to certain people. Who, for instance? Oh, someone who wanted secret mathematical formulae, for instance. You might have something there. Yes, Miss Renoir. I might have something there indeed. Mr. Thurston, I, I, I've got to talk to you. Mr. Gilbert. You've got to get Dr. Brenner out of Madagascar tonight. I've no way of forcing the doctor. The doctor changed his mind. Grant just threatened to kill the doctor unless he give him the discovery. Where's Dr. Brenner now? The airport. He's waiting for us. Where's Rocky Grant? Uh, I don't know. Well, you should never let the doctor out of your sight. Come on. <laughs> Mr. Thurston, I'm still not so sure I should leave with you. Maybe we are acting too hastily. Grant threatened to kill you, didn't he? Yes, but leaving Madagascar like this with so much work still undone. You have your notebook with you, Doctor. Look, Mr. Thurston, over there, that automobile racing across the field. It's coming right towards us. Mr. Thurston, wait. Benoit. You must take me with you. Please don't say no, don't say anything. Just take me. I've got to get out of Madagascar now on this plane. You have a trick memory, Miss Van Well, How do I know you don't have a few other tricks up your sleeve? You don't. Except for that gun that's now in your hands. I'm just desperate enough to use it, Mr. Thurston. Oh, in that event, then, step aboard. After you, Mr. Thurston. Well, we're far enough away from Madagascar now for you to stop pointing that gun at me. Okay, Mr. Thurston. You know, I'm so happy to be flying away from that Rocky Grant, I can't begin to tell. And don't even try, Pagan. Rocky, 
small world, isn't it? How did you get in here, Grant? Got awfully uncomfortable back in that little baggage compartment, so I decided to come in with you. As I look around me, I see a lot of my old friends here. Don't look at me. Dr. Brenner, Mr. Gilbert, Pagan, and the lovely Miss Van Waugh. Stay away from me, Rocky. I was disappointed when you ran away last night without saying goodbye. It hurt me. You didn't mean to hurt me, did you? <laughs> you hit her. Next time, please say goodbye when you're going any place, my love. What's the matter, Mr. Thurston? Don't care for my manners? Your manners are the least offensive part of you. I see this gun doesn't frighten you. But this is a friendly gathering. Oh, sure, very friendly. I imagine even the pilot is some kind of friend of yours. No, he surprised me a little. I actually had to remind him of what he owes me before he let me come along. And maybe getting ready to crash into that island just ahead is his own idea. What island? We're going to crash. That pilot's lost his mind. Get down on the floor. Look out! Well, there you are, Mr. Thurston. You disappeared right after the crash. Yeah, I wanted to have a look around. Well, where are we? I don't know. Some tiny uninhabited island in the Indian Ocean. We'll be lucky if we all don't starve to death. If Racker and me are stuck on a small island, I ain't gonna die of starvation. Where's Dr. Brenner and the others? Further down the beach, all except the pilot. He's somewhere inside the wreckage trying to fix the radio so that we can send for help. Wait here, Pagon. I'm going to speak to the pilot. Oh, Mr. Thurston. Know anything about fixing radios? Captain, I'd like to know why we crashed on this island. Well, it's hard to explain. Yes, lies are always hard to explain, Captain. You would have done the same thing if a man had a gun at your head telling you'd blow it off if you didn't crash. What man was that? Ellsworth Gilbert. Gilbert? Well, you can ask him yourself. I'm afraid I can't. I saw him a little while ago on the beach. Ellsworth Gilbert is dead, Captain. Murdered. Just a moment, we continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, created by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. Wherever you live, you hear of Frigidaire refrigerators that have been on the job for years with no time off for bad behavior. Mrs. Louise Axdahl of Alameda, California says, I used my Frigidaire for 16 years without one minute of trouble. Now I have a new Frigidaire because I needed more space, and I'm truly very happy with it, too. And from Richmond, Indiana... Mr. and Mrs. O.E. Goodman report that their 23-year-old Frigidaire refrigerator is still going strong. Now, if this is the kind of service you would like to enjoy, just make sure that your next refrigerator is a genuine Frigidaire. In fact, you can be even more certain of long service than were these purchasers of former years. For today's Frigidaire refrigerators are powered by the famous Frigidaire meter miser, and the meter miser is the simplest cold-making mechanism ever built. Not a single belt or gear or pulley to get out of order and demand attention. Remember the good reports you hear about Frigidaire refrigerators that have served for years. Remember the modern advances, like the meter miser, that make today's Frigidaires even more dependable. And remember, for all the advantages you want, ask to see the name Frigidaire when you ask to see a new refrigerator. And now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Ken Thurston was flying Dr. Brenner from Madagascar back to the United States because Rocky Grant, a racketeer, had tried to seize the doctor's atomic discovery. While in flight, Grant entered from the baggage compartment where he'd been hiding. Suddenly, the plane crash-landed on a small desert island somewhere in the Indian Ocean. The 
pilot explained to Mr. Thurston that he'd been forced to land there by Dr. Brenner's assistant, Ellsworth Gilbert. Mr. Thurston was unable to verify this since he had just seen Ellsworth Gilbert on the beach. He'd been murdered. But now it's the following morning, and Mr. Thurston has just awakened from a troubled, fitful sleep. He sees Miss Van Waugh working busily over a small fire. Good morning, Miss Van Waugh. Hello there. You're just in time for some coffee. Coffee? Where did you dig up such a luxury on this bleak place? We formed a salvaging party early this morning to look for food. And somebody found a pound of coffee in the plane. M- Mr. Thurston, I, I'm sorry for the way I acted last night. But I just had to get out of Madagascar. Why? Remember, you suggested that I might use my memory on secret formulae. Well, someone else came to me with the same idea last night. Only wasn't suggesting he was demanding. Coffee's ready. Aren't you having any? After you. We only have one drinking cup. All right, thanks. Tell me, was the man who demanded that you memorize formulae our friend, Mr. Grant? I think I can answer that question. I was crude enough to eavesdrop from behind those bushes. He's got a gun, Mr. Thurston. Don't worry, Valois. That memory of yours is too valuable for me to kill you. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to deprive you of your companion, Mr. Thurston. Don't be a fool, Grant. Sorry, Thurston. The talkative Miss Van Waugh has told you too much for your own good. So long. What the... Why doesn't it shoot? Hey, Grant. You look awfully silly standing there shooting an empty pistol. Empty? I unloaded it last night while you were asleep. I'll kill you for Stay where you are, Rocky. Well, where'd you get a gun? Oh, now, wait a minute, baby. You wouldn't shoot me. Why not? Now, put, put the gun down, baby. Put it down. Why? I've seen you kill people so often, I'm used to it. Oh, now, Thurston, stop her. I don't know if I can, Grant. Look, I'll do anything you say. Just give me a break. Why did you stow away on that plane? I... I knew Brenner's discovery would be worth millions. I tried to lay my hands on it, that's all. Why did we crash on this island? I had nothing to do with that. I have no idea why we crashed here. I told you have no idea why Gilbert was murdered. No, no, I don't. I didn't kill him. Who did? I don't know. All I know is I didn't do it. Thurston, you've got to believe my story. I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't... Get a hold of yourself. Huh? Here. You better drink my coffee. You need it more than I do. Hmm? Thanks, Mr. Thurston. Thanks a lot. Feeling any better, Grant? Yeah. Yeah, I I feel fine. I I, I feel just just like. Oh. He fainted. Water, somebody, quick! Well, the dangerous killer passed out from fright. He didn't faint. That cup of coffee had enough poison in it to kill all of us. Grant's dead. Dead? Poison? Well, who would have done that? A very good question, Miss Van Waugh. Oh, you don't think that... You're not accusing me. I'm not accusing anybody. Where did you get that coffee? I told you, from the wrecked plane. And you had no idea it was poison. Of course not. I was going to drink some myself. But you made sure to give me the first cup. You said there was a salvaging party. Yes, everyone was finding things in the plane and handing them out to me. Who handed you the coffee? I I don't remember. I was so anxious to see what they were giving me, I didn't even look at their faces. All I remember is hands. Strange. A girl who earns a living by feats of memory can't remember who gave her a pound of coffee less than an hour ago. I can't remember. I just can't remember. Mr. Fish, Mr. Fish, I've been looking all over for you. Boy, have I got bad news. The radio's busted. The radio's been busted since the moment we crashed here. Yeah, but it was fixed, and now it's busted again. That was our last chance. Now nobody will ever know what happened to us. Apparently somebody knows. See that small boat out there? Boat? Where? I see. See, I see. We're saved. They found us. Oh, hi there. We're over here. Sure. Mr. Thurston, he's got a gun. I suppose he thinks we're wild savages. Hey there, mister, you don't need the gun. All right, everybody. Stand back, get your hands up. You're making a big mistake. Shut up, you. Didn't you come here to rescue us? What do you want? I want Brenner's notebook. Give it to him, doctor. If you say so, Mr. Thurston. Brenner, I think I'll take you along with me. And if I refuse to go with you? Look, my boss wants the information in that notebook. He wants it absolutely exclusive. 
So there's nothing else to do but take you with us where we can keep an eye on you. What shall I do, Mr. Thurston? You have no choice but to go with him. He has the gun. Well, goodbye. Goodbye and good luck. Good luck to you, Doctor. Listen, mister. If you leave us stranded here, we'll all die. That's the general idea, Mac. Okay, Brenner. I'm beginning to envy Gilbert and Grant. At least they're not dying slowly like we are. Oh, it's entirely possible that within a few minutes we'll be picked up by an American destroyer. Mr. Thurston, you sound delirious. Maybe. But look out there across the water. Tell me what you see. There's a... Could it be a mirage? No. No, it's a boat, Mr. Thurston. A destroyer, like you said. A beautiful American destroyer. <laughs> Well, I'd call this the happy ending, Mr. Thurston. Now that we're being taken back to America by courtesy of the United States Navy. You feel perfectly safe and, se and secure now, don't you, Miss Van Roy? I can't feel perfectly safe in the presence of a man who can predict destroyers dropping from out of nowhere. It's uncanny. Not so uncanny. On the island, I sent out a call for help over the radio. This destroyer picked it up. If the radio was smashed. How could you? I always you? kept an eye on the pilot and his progress with the radio. When he finally got it fixed, he ran off to find me. While he was gone, I sent the message for help. Then it was you. Yeah. I smashed the radio. Once I was sure that help was on the way, I destroyed it to keep the person who was after Dr. Brenner's discovery from using it. Do you know who that person is? Don't you, Miss Benoit? How should I know? You still think I... Oh, here you are, Mr. Thurston. I've been looking all over to you to tell you the good news. I already know the good news, Pagan. We've captured the boat that took Dr. Brenner off the island. You see, I told the captain of this destroyer to be on the lookout for that boat. Well, they're bringing that gang of crooks aboard now, and I thought we ought to see if Dr. Brenner is all right. Good idea, Pagan. Won't you join us, Miss Benoit? Sounds more like an order than an invitation. The fresh sea air may do you good. After you, Miss Benoit. I can't wait to see the surprised look on Dr. Brenner's face when he sees us He's here. He's coming on deck now. Good evening, Dr. Brenner. Is it just surprised, doctor? Very pleasantly surprised. Now, perhaps we can all put our heads together and figure out who killed Gilbert and Grant. Now, problems like these are a little out of my line, Mr. Thurston, but I will do my best. Miss Benoit? If you think I did it, nothing will change your mind. What possible reason would I have? We'll examine your motives later, but first... I'd like to see if Dr. Brenner might have had some reason. You are accusing me. Not at all, Doctor. But as a scientist, you know that one must study every possibility before reaching the correct solution. Well, of course. Now, let's take a hypothetical case. Suppose, Doctor, that you had decided to sell your atomic secret to the highest bidder. Now, Grant threatens your life. You would have had to leave Madagascar with me just to shake off Grant. But before you left, you might have made arrangements for someone to pick you up on an island somewhere. You might have forced the plane down by convincing your assistant, Gilbert, it was, the th it was the thing to do. Gilbert had too much respect for you to doubt you. Once we crashed, it's possible that you murdered Gilbert, since he could be of no further use to you. Now, mind you, this is, uh, this is all hypothetical. Oh, oh, it's closer to sheer fantasy, Mr. Thurston. May I trouble you for a cigarette? Here, doctor, have one of mine. Oh, thank you very much, Miss Benoit. Those hands. I remember now. Those were the hands that gave me the coffee. I am afraid your extended stay on the island has affected your mind, Miss It all Benoit. comes back. I see it. What made me forget? You didn't forget, Miss Benoit. You remember that the doctor handed you that poison coffee. But your conscious mind refused to accept the idea that he could be a murderer. Well, Dr. Brenner? Well, I, too, have a hypothetical case to present, Mr. Thurston. 
Supposing I did commit those murders, do you think that society can afford to destroy a man like me? It can't afford not to. Look out, Mr. Thurston. He's reaching for a gun. Oh, no, gentlemen. I have here in my hands a much more potent weapon, my notebook. With your assistance, there is still a chance for me to get away, Mr. Thurston, and no one will blame you. I'll trade you this notebook against my freedom. It's no deal. Now, consider carefully. I'm an old man. It is a small triumph for justice to deny me my few remaining years, and a great triumph for progress to have my life wisdom contained in this notebook. There was no wisdom in your life, Doctor. There's knowledge, yes. And it's in that notebook. Well, it's useless to us as long as you're alive and free for even a single day to sell it to the highest bidder. No, Dr. Brenner, it's no deal. All right, then... He did it, Mr. Thurston. He actually did it. It threw it overboard. It's lost. Yes, Pega. It's lost. In other hands, it could have made all our lives happier. But rather than permit Dr. Brenner to use his knowledge for destruction, it's better that his precious notebook should lie at the bottom of the sea. Perhaps someday, somewhere, maybe at this very moment, some scientist is making that discovery again. Let's hope that that man will use his knowledge for good instead of evil. Let's hope for the best, Pagan. star Herbert Marshall will return in just a moment. Frigidaire's Man Called X is presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer. We invite you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric appliances, refrigerators, ranges, water heaters, home freezers, the new automatic washer, dryer, ironer, and many other Frigidaire refrigerating and air conditioning products for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. I've always wanted an electric water heater, Mr. Nile. Well, then take my advice and buy a Frigidaire electric water heater. Ask your Frigidaire dealer about the wonderful new magnesium rod that makes tanks last years longer. Ask about the new 10-year protection plan on Frigidaire electric water heaters. Now, Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. It is my great pleasure to announce that our own Johnny Green has been signally honored by Downbeat, the nationwide newspaper of music. To make a special presentation, we have in the studio Mr. Eddie Ronan, West Coast representative of Downbeat. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. On behalf of Downbeat, I am pleased to award to Johnny Green, musical composer and conductor of The Man Called X, the special scroll for outstanding achievement in the creation of original dramatic music for radio. Thank you, Eddie Ronan, and thank you, Bart. Nice going, Johnny. Next week, next week, Laughing Lady, a story of the Dread Sicilian Mafia, a terrorist organization operating in a traveling circus. As usual, Leon Belasque will be along as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by D. Engelbach, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by David Shaw. Until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Center.